Hey everyone, it's Greg from Tabletop Nights. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, today is a little bit of a sad story. Um, I'm not really happy. Um, to be honest, I've never big, been a big fan of um, the Borg. They're an evil, evil bunch. Um, I've never been happy with uh, Bjorn Borg. I didn't like his style. I didn't like his... Uh, the way he went about it, picking on poor little John McEnroe. Um, I don't even like Cyborg as a superhero character. I think he's terrible. I, I'm not even a big fan of those big ice borgs that ships... Anyway, the most evil borg in the universe, though, is Richard Borg. Um, and for obvious reasons battle law more battle law bluff lies dice bet you didn't know about that one uh, memoir 44 maps expansion packs more expansion packs more expansion packs aeroplanes Actual memoir forty four Battle Cry The Great War Command and Colours Dozens of others. Why am I so upset? Well, to be honest, I thought I'd had enough of Richard Borg, and then to my disgust, this arrived today. Red alert. Red alert. Red alert. OMG WTF. Red alert. Let's take a look in the box. Okay, so here's the red alert core box. Space Fleet Warfare by Richard freaking Borg. Um, big box, really hefty, uh, what's on the back, beautiful, tells you what's in it, every box has to tell you what's in it, let's crack this one open, and see what it's got, oh, anticipation. All right, I'm going to make a mess. Mrs. won't be happy, but that's okay. That's a nice box lid. Love the artwork. Reminds me a bit of Dreadnought. Um, of course, there are Dreadnoughts in this game, I think, as part of the expansion. Rules of play. We've got 43 pages of glorious color and explanations. Now, obviously, this is a command card type game like um, his others. I haven't read a lot about it, to be honest, but as soon as I saw it, I thought I must have. Starships. Ooh, red alerts. Lots of bits and pieces. How to play. The object of the game is to capture a set number of victory points. Hello. That's a bit original, Richard. I love you. Um... Fantastic. Lots of examples. Lots of colour. Um, I can't wait to get in and see what the rest of the components look like. Um, I do remember that Battle Cry the first time when I opened up and got those big chunky dice out and then had to apply stickers to them. Oh my lord. Not happy, Jan. Not happy. So it looks pretty impressive. The Triangulum system. Lots of scenarios there. We've got eight scenarios and I think I've got some extra bits in the expansions but we'll soon see um, fantastic helpful reminders that's cool nice rule book what's this a red alert something um, a nice postcard for your mother perhaps you could hope you're feeling well your test results came back red alert 
probably not appropriate. I'll figure those out later. But that's that kind of standard medium stock, not too thin. So whatever they are, they're okay. Uh, obviously some uh, bits and pieces here that describe the different cost values, movement, etc., of your various ships. Some of their special abilities, victory points that they're worth, I'm assuming, as you capture them. So we've got a flagship, heavy battleship, squadron, standard battleship, heavy cruiser, standard cruiser, heavy destroyer, standard destroyer, heavy... Oh my goodness. More bits than MWAR 44, I think. Just about. Uh, punch boards, some hexes, uh, different descriptions, I believe, of the uh, the destroyers. So it's, it's going to be movement, power, etc. I haven't read up a lot about this, to be honest, other than... It looked good. Um, pretty good chunky hexes, so nothing there that's too you're going to worry about. It's not going to flex or bend, so that's really cool. More there. We've got some fighter stats, some little attack markers. I'd say these are victory point tokens, perhaps, or spots on the board that you need to... Objective tokens, perhaps, something like that. Um, I could look in the rules, but there's too much to get through. Sorry. Oops. Uh, more, more planets, more worlds, more, more fantastic bits and pieces. Ooh, I think that obviously there's this is the other, um, the other squadron group there. So one's sort of got the, the uh, the greeny shield logo, and one's got the purple trident. Not bad, not bad at all. Here we go. Ooh, ah. Ah, 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 sorry, a bit excited. A little cloth mat here. Let's see what that looks like. Sorry about the crinkle. I'll try and fix that in post. Interesting. So there's no board here. We have this nice tablecloth. Lovely. Nice. That's quite nice. Let's have a look at a little doodad sitting on there. Ah, yes. Interesting effect. Needs a bit of an iron. Um, and I guess if it's cold, you can wrap it around your shoulders and sit by the fire with a nice snifter of Shiraz. Beautiful. So that's a massive playing area. That's got to be like three miles by four kilometers there. That's pretty big. Wow. Okay. It's bigger than my head, put it that way. And that's pretty big. Uh, that can go in there. Ah, the dice. The dreaded dice. Oh, hello. I don't have to put stickers on. Nice etched dice. They look good quality. They've got a bit of heft to them. I don't know if the balance is out because there's the, uh, the engraving is quite deep, but... Uh, it looks like you have a red alert symbol, a green, a purple. So it looks like maybe you hit on the ones that match your opponent. Whereas obviously in M144 and some of the other games, it's about you have to match the unit. Um, so there's, they're great. There's, what's that? 12 dice. And I give them the test. Oh, I'm looking forward to that already. That's going to be cool. Very cool. Hopefully we'll have a playthrough up um, very soon. Very, very soon. I'm going to go through the cards. I want to leave the ships to last. Cards, they always give me trouble. Seriously. I should have had a uh, pair of scissors prepared. Here we go. Ah, the trouble with parasites. So these are, they're certainly not linen finished. They're, look, they're serviceable cards. The, um, they're fairly thin though. So you'll, you'll probably want to sleeve them. Obviously being a command driven game, you're going to be doing a lot of shuffling, a lot of getting them ready for each game. So after, you know, 400 games, they might start to show some wear. Uh, 
The Trouble with Parasites, there's obviously a Star Trek reference there. Simultaneous Battle, Order Cruiser, Lock on Target Cruiser. Play this card when an ordered unit is rolling its combat dice against a cruiser unit. Combat with one additional die. Hold your fire. Play this card after an opponent declares a combat before dice are rolled. Your defending units attempt to negotiate its way out of being attacked. Okay. So there's lots of different strategies it looks like here. There's spy cards, boarding party, battle fury. Uh, I don't know what the symbols are. We'll have to look those up and we'll do a bit of a rules run through at some point. Um, warp charge. Heaps of cards there. There's probably ooh, 50 there. 50 or 60. There's another deck here. So what were these ones called? These are the Task Force and Combat cards. Slippery little suckers. So that's what they are. Is there anything else in there? Task oh, there's a few Command. Task Force, Command and Combat. These guys are... Come on. You can do it. Come on. More command. Combat. Combat. Um, look, the artwork's pretty nice. It's fairly stark as you'd expect Deep Space to be. It's got those kind of big... Dreadnought battle cruisers. I'll put some on the screen so you can have a look at these a bit closer up. Right? But, uh, oh, and again, like uh, all the other games uh, Richard's put out, not all of them, but, you know, you have cards that do sort of the flanks in the middle, the centre, when you're working out who's going to be doing their moving and attacking. So they're really nice. Um, again, the artwork on the back is nice, but I would think that I'll, I'll definitely sleeve them just because they're the edges will wear um, but still good enough standard to play with right some big ships okay that's in there what's over here sticks and stands and bases now this will be uh, horrendous when some of these break you know someone gets a bit heavy-handed um, but they're pretty strong the little stands there obviously there's different oh, I, I assume all the stands are pretty much the same but there's smaller ones there which I guess are for fighters so if I pop a couple of those in there in there stay you want them to stay. You don't want to... Mm, nothing worse than when you pick up your ship and these sticks fall out. So I, I suggest there'll be a little bit of gluing going on. You may not glue the ship on, but you'll probably at least glue that bit. Here we go. Here's a big dude. Oh, is that going to fit? That's going to fit. That stick's going to keep coming out. So it looks like... Well, that's a... That's a tight fit. Which I suppose is a good thing. Now that one went in a bit easier. So it's it's a bit different to my um, X-wing set, but hey, that's not bad. They're going to be popping along quite nicely. I do like that. Um, that's not bad. So that's obviously a big uh, big Kahuna. Here we have lots of smaller ships. So again, these are these require the double stands. And here we go. Here's a little fighter. I'll put a little fighter up there next to it, so we can do a bit. Of, they are small, and they've got smaller sticks. Again, I'm not looking at the rule book. I'm just doing what um, many guys do when they get an IKEA package. They just, you know. I don't need no stinking instructions. Here's a little fighter. Oh, looks a bit like the ships out of um, 
a Terminator. Those ones that were chasing them around. Well, that's, that's small. But look, it, that's good though. At least it gives you a sense of scale. Um, and they're probably going to look pretty impressive on the, um, on the board. Look, there's a heap more of the big ones. More of the middle size. More slightly larger. There is heaps of ships. There are heaps and heaps and heaps. Um, and different models, which was good because I think originally they were all going to be the sort of the same design, but obviously they raised enough money or when you um, put into the Kickstarter, they gave them different um, different designs there. You don't want them all looking exactly the same. So that's cool. I think that's a pretty cool feature. So amongst those hundreds and thousands of ships, that's the core box, which is pretty good. Um, I'm not going to make you watch me pack all of this up. I'll get my kids to do it later. They're 21 and 18, 19, so they'll probably just tell me where to go. But that's okay. That's life. Uh, what I'll probably do before we close is I'll set a few of these up so you can actually have a look at them again. And we can move the camera in a bit closer and, and have a detailed look at some of these pieces. But everything so far there excites me. I'm a bit unsure about the cloth mat. That'll be interesting. Um, but, you know, I'll spread it out on the table and we can really get into it um, in more detail there. All right, so off screen. Off screen. Next, we'll take a look at the Dreadnought Starship Escalation Pack. I, I think we should be uh, striving for peace, not escalation. But if Richard says we have to, then, you know, he's the boss. He is the boss. I have to find some way to open this now without cutting my fingers off. This is definitely not as heavy as the core box, but hey, this box will probably go in the bin anyway. Um, let's have a look. So here we have the same quality punch outs, which is okay. That's good. Um, I hate it when they skimp sometimes on expansion things. There's a Dreadnought Starship Escalation Pack little rules unit here. So there's costs for purchasing the Dread, Dreadnought Starship unit. So these look the same as... Are they the same as the... Oh, no. Silly me. What was I thinking? These are much bigger. So... Check that one out. That is massive. Let's do it. Uh, hmm. Let's do it. Look look how resourceful I am. Look at that. Now we're talking. Now I don't know um, how big American money is, but the base of this one is about the size of an Australian 20 cent piece. So I'd say that's a good four and a half inches long, that, um, that model. So that's pretty substantial for a piece that's just sitting in a hex on a, on a board. Um, so it's it's going to have a fair bit of um, table presence. People are going to want to see it and go, "Oh wow, that looks amazing! How do I play?" But it's going to if you don't if you've only got a small dining table or a coffee table, you're probably going to have to play on the floor. Uh, there's some more little bases there. There's the two bases for the dreadnoughts, and there's three tiny, tiny, tiny ships, and they're about the size of a Hmm. Probably an Australian five cent piece. Sorry, guys. I don't know if that's a nickel, a quarter, a dime. A... I should I should look that up. I'll do that. I'll I'll take that on board. Thanks for your feedback. Um, and I'll give you some real comparisons uh, later on before we close. Okay, so that's the. Escalation pack, the Dreadnought Starship Escalation 
expansion. Pretty good. I'm liking it so far. And if it plays anything like the other games, I'm sure it will, but with a bit more depth. Um, look, I wasn't a big fan of commands and colors, only because I don't play a lot of block games. I love the minis. I'm shallow, pathetic, sad. And then I complain about having to paint the minis, so I don't know what I want. But that's okay. That's what board gamers do, right? Am I the only one? Fraggle Rock, where's... The, there we go. This is the Red Alert Carrier Starship Escalation Pack. More Escalation. Can't we just... Can't we just love another? Love another? One another? Don't tell the missus you might want to love another. You get in a lot of trouble. Okay. Here we go again. Oh, cool. We've got uh, more snazzy tokens there. We have another rules leaflet. Oh, look, and there's more scenarios in here, obviously. I should have had a look at that before. The Dreadnought one has scenario... Nine, so there was eight in the main book. Nine and ten. Uh, Carrier Starship adds, obviously, 11 and 12. Ah, the weapon of choice. Hmm, okay. Bit of fat boy slim there. Let's put this up here. Show you this ship. Again, at the end, I'll put all the ships up together so you can have a really good look at the comparison. And again, it's a, it's a different model. So I'm loving that. They're all a bit different. There you go. Those couple there. The fighters, I think, are all the same, which is fine because that's what fighters should be. You want some consistency in your fighter regiment. Regiment? Flight. Flock. Group. The collective noun? All right, so that's pretty good again. Um, I like the size. They're, they're quite um, decent sized bits. You know, it's not hollow. It's got a bit of weight to it. So it's going to sit nicely on the board. Really like those. I'll get all these mixed up and then have to reassemble them later. But that's just how I roll. I'm pretty cash. Pretty cash. What's next? Ah... The Vice Admiral Flagship Escalation Pack. It's a trap! Sorry about my terrible impersonations there. So there you go. Ooh, more, more, more ships? Obviously more ships. I don't know why I'm saying that. Let's have a look at this one. So it says two to six players. I'm not playing with anyone else except the person opposite. I don't know, you know... I think if it's like other games of this nature, you'd have to split up your forces, and I'd say you're going to have someone looks after the right, someone looks after the left, someone looks after the center, and obviously when they cross over, then you take over those ships. That's great if you want to be friendly and have a bit of fun and pretend you're playing the full game. Yeah. Rubbish. Richard, come on. I know you designed it for two, so that's okay. Right, so the Vice Admiral Escalation Pack. More funky tokens. Beautiful insert. Look at that. You could... You could... Flying Nun? Anyone remember? No one remembers Flying Nun. All right. Scenario. Oh, gee, I've opened these up in the right order too. So here's another little rules leaflet with scenarios 13 and 14. So you've got heaps of game here. This is going to last forever. So hopefully you bought the whole lot like I did. Um, if anyone wants to start donating games to me, just saying. Okay. More stands, more sticks, more shit. Ah, oh, these are tiny. Look at them. Not even worth it. I think I've seen this ship before. Ah. Same one as in the core box. See? See? See how I saw that? There you go. There's one. There's another. Uh, so that's cool. A couple more scenarios. Ships I've already seen. So I'm not sure about that. But that's okay. The scenario obviously allows for it. So 
Oh, I'm never going to put these back together. I'm going to get in real trouble. What's next? Crikey. This one is... Uh, now, this one I'm pretty keen on. This is the logistics and space platform. So this one's got a bit more heft to it. Uh, look, it looks like um, Thunderbird 5. Is that not 5, the one in space? Cool. See? i got a mind like a steel trap. Ah. Open. Again, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll put all these together on the mat so you can have a look at how it looks set up. It's a big footprint. Um, but hey, the wife doesn't need her dining table all day, every day, does she? And sorry, when I say wife, partner, male, female, androgynous, unspecified, um, LGBTQI, RSVPA, etc. Glory to you all. Okay. There's the escalation pack. If, you know, if I did that, that might be useful. Is that useful? Too late, I've done it the other way for everything else. Sorry. Ooh, transport tokens, space platform for both the different um, uh, races. I was going to say tribes, but it, I suppose you can have a space tribe. Why not? Uh, there's my beautiful little landing platform. I'm saving this for a second. So this has ooh, quite a few more rules. So there's a few pages here, not just the four. So there's about eight there. And this has scenarios 15, 16, 17, and 18. 18 scenarios. That's pretty cool. Oh, the space platform looks mega awesome. I'm hip like the kids, you know. That's why I can say things like mega awesome and get away with it. All right. Let's open up this baby. Ooh. Ooh. All right. What do we got here? Wow. What are these dudes? The box will tell me. Will the box tell me? Let's have a look at the box. We have transport ships. So these are transport ships. That's a transport ship. Uh, one space platform. Only one. That's outrageous. But that's okay. And that goes on the big round. I'm going to put that one together straight away because I want to see how cool it looks. Right. Oh no, I need assembly instructions. This is outrageous. Okay. I'm liking it so far. And they go in a, looks like a downward direction. So circling around the space station is that ship there. How about that? That's going to look awesome on the board. So obviously there's going to be some fights over that space station. Um, and I'm going to win it every single time. I won't tell Ryan or Liam that. I'll just let them play and think they've got a chance. Although they usually beat me at most things. So that's all the little boxy bits. Um, sorry about the mess, kids. But you should see the rest of the room. It's an absolute abomination. Right. Here's something else. Ooh. This is the Meteor Storm Escalation Pack. It has a couple of D6. Wow. Slumming it, Richard. Right. Oh. Some people take care of things. I'm I'm too impatient. Sorry. And I know you've got better things to do than sit here and watch me open packets. Right, these things I will put straight back in here. So we've got... Oh. Interesting. 
things falling out everywhere. So we've got a oh, shower. Everyone li likes a nice shower after a storm. So we've got storms and showers. More storms and showers. Let's punch those and get rid of the excess. They're pretty big pieces, but obviously they're big hexes on the map. So I'll show them again later. D6, you, I think you've seen those before. Escalation pack. So these are meteor tiles. There's a meteor storm or a meteor shot. Makes sense. It wasn't something to do with the bathroom or the ensuite. Huh. Clever. Meteor dot. Ah, so this is another scenario or two. Scenario 19 and 20. So I've missed a couple there. It must be something in the other pack. Uh, the meteors move. Looks like they move around in the... Um, they move from the side of the stack of the meteor tiles to the opposite side of the battlefield, left to right. So obviously, as you're playing the game, you're trying to concentrate on your opponent, these things are going to be sweeping across the board. So that adds a bit more variety and depth. I think that's pretty cool. I will pop those back in the bag, otherwise I'm going to start getting a, bit of, a little bit out of control. And you people have to go and make breakfast or dinner or etc. Right, next. This is the Space Rift Escalation Pack. or oh, 3D6. That's like D18. Yes, I know some of you are cringing as I rip this bit, but it is kind of the thing on the top of a snack pack that you would just rip off. I'll be careful with the bag, I promise. Ish. So this arrived, what's the date today? Well, it's it's still early March, so I think we're probably one of the first places on the planet to get one shipped to an actual buyer. So that's pretty exciting. That's the good thing about being in Australia. We get a lot of stuff straight out of um, Asia, as in China. And I think um, the UK are looking at getting this from about the 18th of March. Um, okay, so here's another leaflet book there. Space Rifts. Looks like you'll be able to travel through rifts onto other parts of the board. That looks exciting. Again, I haven't read any of the rules. I just saw Richard Borg and Little Spaceships and I thought, must have. Must have. So this gets up to scenario now. That's 21 and 23. So we've already hit, you know, 23 scenarios. That's a lot of game. Here's the tokens. Nice, big size. They're all the same thickness. I do like the design on them. It's kind of a nebulous uh, feel. Obviously, there's going to be some die rolls that will change directions of uh, bits and pieces or maybe where you turn up. You might go from that rift to another rift. I don't know. Tell me. Put it in the comments. Teach me the rules. I don't care. Uh, I'm just a bit of a board game freak. So I'm going to start up my own site, BGF, as a direct competitor to board game. No, I, I love Board Game Geek. They do a fantastic job. Um, and it was great that the community actually came together and support them and said, let's make this a going concern. They've been around for a long time now, um, grown, and really provide a great service. I try and back them every year now i used to be a bit you know eh, you know are they worth my 15 us or whatever it is yes they are um aldi and the whole guy the bunch there fantastic um, i've got one more little packet here i have no idea what this packet is for i can't remember what was on my order you know when you see add-ons and you go yeah add it add it add it add it add it oh okay so i think this is obviously like a so, uh, this is a special pack. These are beautiful silver dice. I'm assuming they're just the same as the other dice. There's nothing special about them other than their color. And they roll nicer. You see that? They roll nicer. They're dice. What's in here? Ooh. Ooh, oh. Another token. Let me pop those dice there so you can have a look at them. Uh, they're about the size of dice. Uh, 
So these are more just, I think these are the same as the core set. Maybe these are so you can paint them or something. I don't remember order them, ordering them. Maybe Richard just thought, Greg would like a present. Let me give him some more. Um, but they are fantastic. Lots of stuff. Um, Richard Borg, I hate you. I hate you. I, I love you. I love you, Richard Borg. Um, so we're going to pause here for a second. I'm going to set up the table and show you what some of them look like on the map. It won't be a proper scenario. I'd just like to put a bit together so you can actually see it, how, uh, how, it, how it looks. And then we can sort of move the camera in and, and have a bit of a closer look. So back in just a second. Okay, guys, so here we are back in the studio with the, uh, the board all set up there. Excuse the sound a little bit. This is the, uh, just the camera mic. If you hear some clip plops in the background, that's my dog, Terry. Terry, where are you? There you go. Say hello, Terry. Good boy. All right, so we have the, um, the Commonwealth, the Red Ships, Confederation of the Green. Uh, the, the board itself or the cloth itself is 53 inches by 40 inches. It takes up half of my table of ultimate gaming, which is six by four foot. Um, and this is, it's a massive footprint. So you might need to stretch out a little bit when you're playing this game, but it does look pretty spectacular. Um, it's kind of just big. It's a real space opera. Um, you can see over here, there's kind of a world. So that's four hexes that sort of come together. Um, it says in the rules that flagships and um, battleships, I think, go on the short stands or poles, they call them in the rules. Everything else goes on the tall. But I thought, I think, the um, to me, the Dreadnought, I just put it on the shorter one because it's kind of this big lumbering beast. I couldn't find out whether that's the right spot or not. Um, we have a carrier over here. You can sort of zoom in there nicely. I've just, uh, you'll spot a little X-wing there. That's just for a bit of a size comparison because I didn't figure out the nickels and dimes and everything else like I said it would, but I will next time. There's the space platform. I really like that model. I think it's really funky. Um, you're going to have cruisers and battleships. Uh, this is the carrier for the Confederation there. And if you just, just the little silver dice sitting on the, the cloth there, it just looks spectacular. Um, over here, here's the other Dreadnought. Again, they have a little fighter cover that goes out. Now, the fighters travel a lot faster. I think they can go up to four hexes or so. Um, more little units over there. I'll just sort of swoop around a little bit. So you can see a bit more from another angle. Go out wide again. Now, if you if you want to sort of see a size comparison as how big everything is, you know, there's some my big bookshelves over there. Um, bookshelves, game shelves, and it's just huge. You know, on the whole table. That's a big table. So that's a four by six table, as I said, and it's, it takes up at least half of it. So uh, I hope that gives you an impression of what it's gonna look like on your table or floor, wherever you've got room to play it. But I think it just looks amazing. Again, it's, it's not overly complex. It's more about the tactics and, and where you play things. There'll be some card luck where you, you can't do something in a sector where you wanna do it. But overall, I can't wait to get into it. I'll get Victor or TJ, one of the other crew, to have a game with me hopefully very, very soon. Um, and we can show you all how it plays and we can have a bit of fun. So guys, thanks for watching Tabletop Nights. I'm Greg, hope you're having a great day. This is Red Alert, Richard Borg. Why? <laughs> See you next time, cheers. Yeah, I'm just tidying up, honey. Love you.